Writing to Flash from within FreeRTOS kernel is fairly simple, as we have the concept of a critical section. Doing this in FreeRTOS SMP, i.e. dual core, is far from simple though, as we have to stop the other core from reading instructions from the Flash. Let's make the cores collaborate on this and not fight. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, IoT, robotics, and other fun tech. I did a previous video on non-volatile storage or writing to flash on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've demonstrated this in bare metal for the single core and dual core firmware. I had not got my library working fully for FreeRTOS kernel at that point, but now I have. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to achieve the critical sections control to allow us to write to flash in single core FreeRTOS and SMP FreeRTOS. For single core, this is fairly trivial and the primitives are all there in the FreeRTOS kernel. For SMP, it's a bit more of a fight though, as we have to take control of both cores to safely write to the flash. Let me tell you how. Please do like the video and subscribe. I do appreciate it. Let's take a look at the concept then. Well, I've previously looked at writing to Flash on the Pico and Pico W, and this is an extension from that. And the Pico has 264 kilobytes of RAM and two meg of flash. Other RP2040 boards may have different amounts of flash. And flash gets used for storing the code that we're running and can be used for storing variables, which is on my intention here, creating non-volatile storage for things like Wi-Fi passwords. So you could also put long-term IoT data that you're holding there, or indeed emulate a file system if you wished. Flash is readable as an extension of the existing memory model of the Pico. Um, when you write to it, it's a little bit different in terms of the address space, but uh, yes, you, you read and write of it as uh, from memory. The key thing when writing to it is we have this concept of the critical section that we talked about last time. We have to protect the processor and everything else going on it so that the flash is exclusively available to write to. We can't be reading any code from it at that time or any data from it. We have to have exclusive access to it so that we can write to it. And we can do that in single core mode on bare metal just by turning off the interrupts. Easy. Running dual core on bare metal is a little bit more tricky. Not only do we need to turn off the interrupts, but we have to halt the second core. In this video, I'm going to look at how we do that when we've got FreeRTOS there. So FreeRTOS is really looking after our cores and I should be interfacing with FreeRTOS in order to do these services. And we look at that on both a single core running under FreeRTOS and dual core running with FreeRTOS SMP. Now, a health warning here. Free, working with single core on FreeRTOS to do this is actually not too difficult. It's sort of, and it, it requires some intermediate knowledge because you need to understand what FreeRTOS is and the concept of scheduling, etc. Now, FreeRTOS SMP, that's a little bit of a stretch. It's a little bit of a stretch even for me. It took me a couple of days of research plus about seven hours to write the code to actually work in SMP mode safely to write to Flash. So this, I will explain how it works, but just a health warning that doing this yourself might be a little bit tricky, but actually I've written the library. So you can use the library and use the uh, task controls that I've already written that allow you to actually do this, I think, safely. All the code that I'm going to talk about today is included in the RPI Pico Onboard MVS repo over on GitHub. This repo is a number of things. First of all, it's the library for working with non-volatile storage on the Pico that I've written. It's also two examples, a one-core bare metal example and a FreeRTOS SMP example to use a library um, that will run on the Pico and it's a set of unit tests. These unit tests were written using the CPPU test framework. And I've done another video talking about that. This is really useful to be able to write test packages to actually validate my library. The library has been inspired by the non-volatile storage library on the Espressif um, ESP32 
library. I really like this library and I wanted something similar to it onto the Pico, hence why I wrote this stuff. So the library is really about name value pair writing into a non-volatile storage. It has support for ints, floats, doubles, um, strings and uh, blobs of data that can all be written as a name into the non-volatile storage area. And then that can be committed to write it to Flash. Um, there's a commit and rollback sort of pattern in the library that I've written, as you would have seen from the last video. So what do we need to do for free RTOS to extend our library to allow us to safely write to Flash? Actually, this is extremely easy to do on FreeRTOS because FreeRTOS gives us the ability to create a critical section already as a primitive. We just need to issue the task enter critical function and that will give us a critical section, which can then be ended with the command task exit critical. So let's have a look at that in the code. So I'm just gonna look at the commit function of MVS on board. So the first thing this is doing is just building out the memory structure that we're going to write to Flash. Won't worry too much about that. What we're really interested in is a protection of the Flash write section. So down here we've got the critical section and I'm detecting if we're in free RTOS, then I issue the command task enter critical. And uh, then we do the flashing and then again, if we're in free RTOS, we enter, we do task exit critical. And it's that easy. My code, test code for that, this is in the package test free RTOS uh, here, and you can build that as a separate uh, executable. Um, it's basically creating a, a function that will blink on um, an LED and run some load in the background. So we've got something else going on within FreeRTOS rather than just writing to Flash. And then we will write to Flash. And it's running a whole set of um, MVS tests here, which are going through and writing uh, chunks to our uh, Flash all the time uh, and the MVS and just checking all of my methods and that everything works. Um, let me just show you that running. So this can running up and run through six tests and 70 checks to validate my library. So doing this on the FreeRTOS SMP looks like it should be fairly trivial at first glance through the library. It looks like we just need to suspend all the tasks. That way we've got nice and clear control of both cores surely, and we can just go into the critical section. Oh no, it's not that easy. Unfortunately, even if you suspend all the tasks, you've still got a bunch of code running from FreeRTOS on both cores. And uh, that's being fetched from Flash. So that's going to interfere with the process. So what we actually need to do is to um, establish a bit of discipline here across our two cores and take control. Because otherwise they're going to fight. So we're going to use core zero to erase the flash and write to the flash while we place core one uh, into some process where it's not going to be reading anything from flash and it's going to be sitting there waiting, being nice and passive. How are we going to do that? Well, that's the tricky bit. All the cores can read code and run uh, instructions both from Flash or from RAM. So what we're going to do is actually write a function that is going to be blocked to only run from RAM and it's going to go through a tight loop pausing that core until it's told to be released by the, um, the other core as it's completed its write process. We'll use the not in Flash function macro in order to put this code in RAM only. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is create a MVS agent object, and I'm going to run two tasks within that. One of which, which is linked to core zero, and one that's linked to core one. 
I'm going to maximize their priority on both. They are not waiting or getting interrupted by other processes before they get going. Once they get going, they'll be fine because they will block everything else. But I want them to be able to get going as fast as possible. They um, are going to lock themselves onto the two uh, cores. So one task is on the core one, one is on core zero. So I know that I've got complete control of those cores or can take controls. So the task on core zero is basically going to wait to be signaled to tell, uh, tell it to execute a commit, to execute a write to the flash. And I use task notification for that. So when I get a task notification in, I know it's time to start writing. At that point, I'm going to ask core one to pause. And I'm going to wait until core one confirms it has paused because I need that core to have stopped too and be in that pause state. At that point, I can start a critical section. I can erase the flash, uh, write to the flash, and then I can end the critical section. And then I can tell core one to resume. And once core one has resumed, I can then signal back to uh, my caller that um, the commit has completed. And I'm signaling back because it's quite important that the next thing I, you're doing, which in my case is a set of tests to confirm that the MVS has been written, actually the MVS has been written because we could potentially have this just sitting around a little bit and the calling function just going on and doing something else. So I do actually need to block it. So I've got a signal going back. And to do that, I'm using a semaphore. I'm using all of the tricks, I'm afraid, in the free RTAS toolkit to do this. So how about call one? Well, this is the call where we're basically just going to pause. So again, this is running up uh, and uh, associating itself with call one only. It's going to wait again for a pause request, which is again going to be a task notification. Then once it's got that, it's going to enter a critical section. It's going to wait until it's told that it can resume and start again. And so it's just going to sit there in a tight loop, doing absolutely nothing, tying up the processor and running from RAM only. And then when it gets the um, message back so that it can resume, it will say that it's OK and it will release the, um, the execute critical section and it can go back up to waiting to be asked to pause again. How am I doing this messaging backwards and forwards between core one and core two, or core, sorry, core zero and core one in this model? Well, I can't use free RTOS notifications here because if I do, um, I'm running those functions and those functions are going to call the instructions from Flash and that's going to break my process. So I have to invent a slightly different and slightly primitive semaphoring approach in order to notify um, to pause and confirm that I've paused, notify to resume and confirm I've resumed. Um, and the way I'm doing that is just using Boolean variables that uh, I'm very carefully controlling who's allowed to write to them. So let's take a look at this in the code. So we've got a additional class here called MBS agent. And really, it's just about starting this up so that it's running and can take control of those two cores. And it's about issuing it the command to commit to it. Now, in SMP mode, it's really vital that your clients use this commit method and not the one on MBS on board. The one on MVS on board is not um, SMP safe. This, to do that, it's got um, a couple of tasks that are running under here. Uh, run zero, which is gonna run on um, core zero, and run one, which is run on, on core one. You'll see run one has been decided defined as being uh, not in flash, so it's gonna run from memory. And there are my methods for just messaging in between to, to pause and to resume. And the way that I'm doing some of these messaging uh, when I'm not using task notifications is these two uh, booleans down here. So I can send a message 
to or to state that call one is actually in poor state or not and i can send a message to call one to tell it to resume we're also using this semaphore so i'm constructing a semaphore there because i want my commit function to actually block um, i certainly need it for test purposes because otherwise the first thing that goes that runs after it runs a little bit too soon checks to see that the commit has happened and goes no it hasn't you haven't committed yet so that that um, yeah, i think it's quite important the commit should block this uh, is a singleton so there is a singleton pattern going on here um, so when we run start on it and start up it's going to start up two tasks one running on core uh, zero one on core one and as you see i set up here a mask associated with the first core that's core zero and i'm setting an affiliation set affinity set for that uh, task doing the same for the task for core one this time the affinity set is zero two meaning it will run against core one core zero process um, here is basically what is waiting for a request to commit when that happens it goes through that pause uh, runs commit using mvs on board and then uh, triggers a resume and then it sends a message back to its caller to let it know that actually we're all done okay we're done via a semaphore on call one we've got the waiting wait for the request to pause again it's a task notification when we receive that task notification then we're going to mark that we're actually are in pause mode and we're basically just going to sit there waiting until we are instructed to resume the other functions are just really just sending those messages in between that's it that's how we safely manage flash writing within smp the test code for here is in under the package so i've got a special sub project called smp here and that's got a cpp u test um, package there uh, to test smp it's doing very similar to before loading it up and putting in some uh, flashing LEDs. Um, the only difference here is in the test, we're very carefully not calling commit um, on our, our uh, MVS object, but actually doing it on this MVS agent. Um, that's the real difference that we need to do when we're under SMP so that we can control both of those cores. Running the test package looks very similar as it did before though you will notice it's confirming that we are in FreeRTOS SMP. This hasn't been a trivial problem and has taken me a couple of days of thinking and a day of coding. Even when reviewing the code um, this week to make the video, I realized there was a bug I needed to fix. The code seems stable right now and all my library tests pass. But if you try this out and find any issues, please do let me know. It's all about really getting some discipline over my two cores. I know what each is doing exactly during the arrays and write process. I would not say this was an elegant solution though, but the only one I can come up with right now. Do you have a better suggestion? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps encourage me to make more videos and please subscribe and hit that notification button to avoid missing the next video. Goodbye for now.